everyone, welcome to the channel of Ecoholics. So in today's video, I will be discussing the topic of Egan values and Egan vectors, which is a very important topic in the real analysis. So when we talk about Egan vectors and Egan values, there is a lot of confusion among students. But if you continue watching this video till the end, I can make sure that you will understand these concepts very easily. All right, so let us see what are Egan vectors and Egan values. So Egan vectors are the vectors that do not change the direction when any linear transformation is applied. So when you're working in the vector space, when you're working with vectors, and if you try to do some kind of linear transformation, so Egan vectors are those things which will never change the direction of the given vector with which you are working. And what about Egan values then? Egan values are the special set of scalars. So Egan values, as the name suggests, they are going to be some scalars, some values associated with the system of linear equations. So the linear transformation you are doing, the equations you are going to use there, they are the scalars here. These are very bookish definitions. But to understand them better, let's get to the next page. So with the help of this, you will perfectly understand what are your Egan values and Egan vectors. So let us say A is a matrix which is going to be a square matrix and the order of A matrix is N. So a non-zero matrix X, which you will call as your Egan vector, is called Egan vector of A. Now I'm working the given matrix to me is A for which the order is n and now I'm trying to find its Egan vector which is x. If Ax is a scalar multiple of x. Now what does it mean? It means that you will only call x as your Egan vector if Ax is going to be a scalar multiple of x. So in other words, if Ax is going to be a scalar multiple of x then only you can call the x as your Egan vector of A. As you can see here, I have written the same thing. So Ax, now lambda over here is my scalar. So lambda into x basically means that lambda is the multiple of x here. So Ax, if it is equal to lambda x, then x will be my Egan vector and this lambda will be my Egan value. So in very, very, very simple words, the effect of multiplying x. So when you are multiplying x with a or when you are multiplying x, which is your Egan vector with lambda, the effect is same. So the effect of multiplying x by the matrix a is equivalent to multiplying x by the scale or lambda. So what, do, what are we understanding from this? It means that if you are multiplying the matrix with its Egan vector from the product of them, you can take out a scalar and the remaining would again be your Egan vector. So if it is possible, then only you can call that x as your Egan vector, otherwise not. So the scalar lambda is called as an Egan value of A and x is said to be an Egan vector of A corresponding to lambda here. So let's try understand this approach with the help of one example. So we have this A matrix, we have this X matrix here. So if I try multiplying A into X, so A is 2, 2, 1, 3 and X is 1, 2. So if I try doing this, what will I get? First row and first column. So 2 into 1 is 2 plus 1 into 2 is 2 over here. Then what I'm going to have? First row, oh sorry, second row and first column. So 2 into 1, 2 plus 3 into 2, 6. So what I have got? I have got the answer as 4 and 8. So if you observe here, if you observe here, from here, if I take 4 common, I will be left with 1 and 2 again. So it means I have written Ax equals to 4 into x very easily. So 4 is my Egan value here and 1, 2, is actually my Egan vector. So this is how you can check whether something is an given is an Egan vector of the matrix or Egan value or 
not. So I hope you will find this video useful. Please like it, share it among your friends, subscribe to the channel. Thank you everyone for watching this video.